Hi everyone, my name is Kendrick and welcome to ENFP Mail. Today I get to interview Prem. So welcome, man. What's up, Kendrick? How are you doing? Good, dude. So all the way from India, that's awesome. I think you're the first guy that I interviewed that's not like Indian American, you know, like, like uh, straight from India, you know, so. Yep. Yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, what was your official typing results when you got it before? And uh, how did you think and what did you feel about it? Uh, I went in with thinking I'm an ENTP. I don't, I've always been typed an ENTP. Yeah. So I, I went in the call thinking that, you know, I'm some sort of like sensor, whatever, you know, that upside down thingy, whatever. But I, I but then uh, I spoke to Shan and Shan was like, yo, yeah, you are NT, spot on. But I thought I was like a not savior play. I thought I was like demon play. Yeah. But then it turned out to be like a savior play. So consume play, blast sleep. It was like, okay, you know, whatever. Yeah. What about the sexual modalities? Uh, um, MF. Masculine feminine. Masculine. Yep. You're, you're uh, one of the MFers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so when you knew that your type was accurate to what you thought you were, which is ENTP, does that make you feel like confident in your skill of typing? Because then you got your type spot on? Yeah. Uh, not really. I didn't really care much about my type. I was always, I always wanted, okay, now once I knew my type, boom, it's going to solve some problem of mine, you know. Yeah. Everyone is under that assumption. Even I was under that assumption. Oh my God, if I just get this type, boom, it solved all my problems. Yeah. It didn't. And I thought, okay, you know what? I was always being typed in ENTP, so I always had like that pre uh, presupposition, you might say. So, but as for my typing skills, I still get typing wrong. I make weekly series in my YouTube channel. Check that out. EATP.nurture. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, I make weekly videos on typing every person of the class. And I often get some point wrong. Especially the observer decider point, I get it wrong all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. It it's very hard because there's very slight nuances to the points that is very hard to spot. Yeah. Yeah, you would think that would be the easiest one because the person's either freaking out about people or things, right? You know? Yeah, yo, man, that is so hard. I've been at that coin for like six months. All every, from last, last six months, I was like, you know, I'll just get this one coin right. Yeah. But it's still going on. The battle is still on. Yeah, yeah I, th I think you are spot on in that, in that sense because I've interviewed some people and I've, I, I, I tend to get people's functions like super accurately correct but it's the order of the functions that I tend to mix up, you know, mm. you know, so yeah. yeah. So I get, I get what you're saying when it comes to that uh, observer versus decider coin, that's kind of tricky, you know, because some, it's sometimes someone might be complaining about people, but it's, it's like, what is the person doing that they're complaining about? Right. You know, is it, are, are they uh -huh. trying to control me or is it they're being too chaotic? You know, like, so it's kind of hard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's start, let's go through all your different, um, Functions first, and then we'll jump to animals. So with sure. feminine and E, do you find yourself forgetting patterns and concepts that you've learned? Forgetting patterns in what sense? And concepts. Like let's Forgetting say, concepts? Yeah, so they said that people with feminine and E tend to forget patterns and concepts because it's, fe it's, it's feminine. So let's say you read a book and you read a concept and you're like, wow, this is a really good concept. And then a few weeks later, you completely forgot about it. You know, it just like flew out of your head, you know? So. I, I think, uh, I think no, any user like remembers concept in terms of, you know, like remembering facts. It's, it's almost like you're downloading a concept. And when you see the similar pattern again, that concept just emerges. So I never really make a conscious choice of uh, remembering or forgetting a concept. I just know if I take this concept in, this concept gets solidified. If I see the same concept somewhere else, you know what I mean? Then the concept becomes more real. So in that sense, I never really like forget concepts. The concept that I don't see often just uh, goes out of my memory. And the, the concept that I see consistently in all the books stays and becomes stronger. Does that make sense? Is it because of your masculine SI? Like you know where to find the concepts when you need, when you need them. So you don't need to keep them in your head. You know, would you, which is, would you say that's accurate? Uh, as a TI user, 
I would build. I I usually build frameworks, right? So right. I use I use concepts to build frameworks. Okay. So so it, it's a, it's like multiplication table, you know. It's not like you constantly have to remember it. You know that it's there. So when I ask like six times six is thirty six, you know what I mean. So you have so, a in your SI then. <laughs> no, it, it it's there. It, it's downloaded in my brain. Yeah. But I know when I see it again, I'll remember the concept again. But I don't really make a conscious choice of uh, remembering it or forgetting it. I just read it and move on. I'm still a gatherer, right? So. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. That, I guess. I guess. So since you're talking about TI, let's go talk about TI then. How do you use your masculine TI? Uh, so so my entire worldview is built on logical frameworks. So that's one more reason why I don't remember, uh, don't forget concept. You might say. Because I use concept to build that framework, right? And it is going from like ground up. Here are the numbers. Here's addition. Here, one plus one is equal to two. You know what I mean? So you're never gonna like forget the concept of addition or remember the concept of addition. It's always embedded in that framework, and in that sense, it's always present in your memory because your entire worldview is built off of that framework. You know? Do you have an example of the framework that you built? Like, like what kind of what kind of frameworks have you built with that masculine TI? For for example, if I'm giving an intuitive point, I know I have to like give a sensory analogy. You know what I mean? If I just give you, if I just let you off with the, uh, intuition, boom, it's out. Can you, and can you elaborate more on that? On the analogy, or on, on a, give me give you a different analogy. Uh, well, give me another framework. Give me another framework, and then okay, and then let on that. yeah. Here's here's a framework for all the OP folks, right? So if you wanna like learn something really fast, the this is what I call cosmic order. So the cosmic order of learning any skill fast, efficiently, is you consume for first 24 hours, right? Once you have consumed enough, start blasting, start blasting, and once you started blasting, you have to improve the output of that thing that you're doing, the skill, by one percent every three months. So this is a framework. Right, so it's built on many concepts. So let's break down the concept one by one. The so first, consume. Why do you have to like consume for 24 hours? Why not 12 hours? The research which shows that you, any skill that you pick up, you become kind of good at in kind of 24 hours. There's even the book written called First 20 Hours. So when you consume, you're not going in with that blank state like how lead blasters go in, right? So you always have like, okay, I know what I'm doing, kinda. But once you start blasting. You're not stuck in this rut of uh, analysis paralysis, right? But you can't just keep blasting shitty stuff, right? So you need to keep improving the blast by one percent every three months. Why one percent every three months? When you improve it one percent every three months, you don't give up. So even if it's one percent ev- good every three months, you don't give up. You know, it's one percent better, so you're good. Here's a framework for learning something. That's a nice blast, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so your your blast is SF. Talk about your SF blast. Like what what is SF blast? Like do you do you um try to enforce what's cool to people? Like like you know because that's what SF is, right? It's like what's popular, what's cool, um you know, in in the in the physical world. So talk about your SF blast. I I see I see SF as uh, values, sensory values. Yeah. Like right, you know, like. It's the same sort of values that you see in like marketing. So when I'm like telling you my framework, yo, look, here's my cool framework. You know what I mean? It'll help you learn any skill that you want in your life. And boom. So I am blasting in terms of you know this is valuable for you, but because my sleep process is a ST, so you're seeing that ST kind of blast. You know what I mean? The blast, the information that's coming out is ST. Because it's sleep processing in ST, but when I'm blasting out, I'm telling you, okay, here's the valuable thing. You know, here's why it's valuable. Stuff so, like that. So it's it's what 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 you process inside your head. That that wasn't that wasn't your real blast. That was a uh, that was you talking about your sleep essentially. Uh, it, it's like we do all four functions. You know what I mean? To even right. get the data, I have to like consume first. Then then I have to like play this with other people and see whether it works or not. Then I have to like sleep process this and understand it for myself why this works. You know what I mean? Then I go and get. Then I go and blast. 
Right. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. From from my interpretation, it sounds like this is what works for you because this is TI, right? This is your this is your framework for you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Because... So so for me, it's like this is a TI framework that's not built that's built on logic. So yeah. in theory, it will work for everyone. Yes, in theory. <laughs> but you're yeah. you're very anti though for sure. That that one you can't uh, deny. You know you're. Your 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 method of uh, communication is super NT. Um, well, I get I get I, I get I get what you're saying. You know, it's like so basically from my interpretation of what you're saying, you know, you spend time consuming within that under 24 hours, but then you you also blast right after the first four hours of consuming right away, because otherwise you might not learn as much if you don't do that. You know, you're you're gonna get paralyzed from over analyzing the same information. You know, going yeah. that that loop. And then from what you said, if you do it for three months, that's when you're really going to get some big gains, some big improvement. Improve 1%, yeah. Yeah, 1% a day, right? Uh, 1% every three months. 1% only for three months? That's, yep. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay, you know, you know what? I guess in a way, when, when you say 1% every three months, it's easier to digest. You know, it's not, it's not so overwhelming, you know? Yeah. yeah. Then that's, that, it, you know, that's why you must, relate, you must relate to this as an any SI user. You want to like go into every skill. Oh, here's traveling. Let me go into that. Oh, here's uh, cooking. You know, let me go fully into that. And you see yourself going into all of them. But when you actually look at it through this framework, you can estimate the amount of time and energy you're going to put in. Which often for us, we don't, it's, it's like out of the equation. But why, so when why, you, why 1% though? Why, why that specific number for three, mo- for three months? I'm, I'm curious. One percent every three months. <laughs> this idea I actually got from Dave and Shan from Objective Personality is really big. Okay. The the reason it's one percent every three months. What one percent really means is is just slightly better. You know. Okay. That's it. If you're slightly better every three months, you're doing good. That's what one percent really means. So when I started my YouTube channel. I, I procrastinated on it for like what two years, and yeah. I had a call with I had a call with uh, uh, Shan and I was like, Yo, Shan, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel on February 2019. I was like, Yo, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. She's like, Yeah, you should go do it, do it. Yo, February I didn't start it. Then March I didn't start. April April end I had my birthday. I didn't start. May I didn't start. I always had something come up, and I was thinking, Okay, once this thing gets over, boom, I'll start. But then one day I just entered my workplace and I thought, okay, you know, why? Why? What? What? How? How can recording a video be so hard? You know, what? What could be so complicated? And I was doing painting before this, learning art and stuff. And yeah. in art, I learned you have to produce a lot of bad things so that good ones can follow. Right. So I thought, okay, how bad is it to just make a one very, very bad video? Yeah. So I just went, that, that was my first video on my channel, if you like, go scroll down. Just yeah. me talking into a camera like this. It's actually like this, which freaked out a lot of observers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and and I did I did not quit because I could see one percent improvement every three months. I could see a slight improvement every three months, and as long as I slightly improved every three months, I was like, okay, you know what, thumbs up. There's no reason for me to quit. Right. Right. Because what happens? What happens most of the time is what we give ourselves. We give ourselves unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. We live in a world where everyone is uh, brainwashed by society, social media, parents, you know, mom, dad, stuff like that. Yes. And you, you never see the growth process. You always see the end result. And that's the kind of stuff that's rewarded in society, in family, stuff like that. Right. So, so you almost want to get to the end place like tomorrow, within a week, within a month. You want, there's a reason why six pack shortcuts sells a lot. You know, six pack shortcuts. It tells a lot of what the society is at. So, what, get, improving slightly every month gives you that consistency, which will over time give you that mastery. Yeah, man, your blast is pretty good. I, I wonder it's, if it's your play blast together that makes your, your blast pretty good, you know? Because <laughs> you, you, you have a play blast manic mode, right? Um, yeah. But, um, I relate to a lot of the things that you said in, just right now because I'm also an EP, so we have that procrastination. Yeah procrastination issue right uh when i started my channel too it took me um it took me a year of thinking about it before i actually pulled the trigger because i was over, <laughs> over, overthinking yeah. it you know 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. You know, I'm kind of envious of the blaster. They just grab a camera, press the record button, and, you oh, know? Okay. Yeah. But don't worry, though. Notice the framework that I gave, consume for 24 hours, start blasting, stuff like that. Yeah. Every type is going to mess up in this framework. Lead blasters are not going to consume and not going to improve every three months. Lead consumes are never even going to start. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everyone is losing. That, that is why this framework kind of works. This is my TI logical framework. It works for everyone. If yeah. you do this in this order, no matter what type you are, you're going to see results. This is the, the prem system. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, prem system. <laughs> yeah, the prem system. That's right. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about your, your SI. So do you find that you have very good memory of the sensory? Like you can remember numbers and uh, facts and details pretty good, even though it's fourth. Would you say that you have a pretty good memory? But pretty good memory subjective. Who are you comparing it to? No, 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 no. We're not, we're not, over, we're not going to empty this. No, no, we're not going to empty. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, good I'm memory about, compared I'm, to what? I mean, I'm talking about your opinion. We're not going to scientifically break it down, you know? Like, okay. I'm just asking plainly can you remember, are you good at remembering numbers? Like, do you remember, like, like, no, a, no <laughs> not really. No, okay. I am, I am good. I would say, if you put me in a spectrum, definitely masculine SI, uh, kind of, kind of better than most, yeah. Yeah, because David Chan said that even though you have fourth function SI, the fact that it's masculine would still show that it's pretty good. Like it's still pretty good, you know. <laughs> for number for remembering facts. Yeah. Look for me, I have no use for remembering facts in my life, especially as an NT because I consume concepts. So I don't really focus my time on remembering facts. My SI works kind of differently where I, I want everything like in a timeline way. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay. so when you hear me blast, that's where you catch it. And it's not like every masculine SI is going to be like, oh, boom, your masculine SI, you, you're going to know who the 15th president of America is. You know what I mean? It's like, no, yo, I don't really I'll, care. I'll, okay. Okay. So but, the, way, the way you're using it is step by step then in a timeline fashion. It just for me, the way my masculine memory, uh, masculine essay kind of fixes in is this timeline thingy where I, I go stuff in terms of timeline, like okay, 2015. Like if you heard my Dave and Shan blast of my YouTube channel, February, I started this March, April, May. You see how I'm emphasizing that March, yeah. April, May, right. then June, I started. You see yeah. that timeline. Then yes. now I'm doing this. It's like that is masculine SI. That's where it shows. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's what I was trying to get at. There you go. You just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome, man. Um, no problem. Your sleep is uh, ST. What's ST sleep like for you? Like, how do you experience that? Uh, I recently kind of figured this out. I made a YouTube video called My Big Toe and MBTI. I think it's called ENTP Guide 2020 now. Okay. And in that, there's a wonderful, wonderful, my favorite section, okay, of law of attraction, where I break it down. Yo, I break law of attraction down like no tomorrow. Like that, that is it, right? PI broke it down, done. Law of attraction is done. So when you watch that law of attraction bit, uh, when you look at that process of what I explained, the, the idea is very ST. And I was thinking, I was, I was talking to Amelia about it. I was like, yo, what is SF plus and what is ST sleep? Uh, and she was like, your, your SF plus is like, you know, you're giving value. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. Look at this cool stuff that I found. That's where the blast is coming. But then the stuff that I actually tell out is like ST sleep process. So it's, it's coming in a very ST way. Okay, step one, step two, step three, step four. Here's a framework. Go here. There's an input thing, output. You know what I mean? That's where I think I see ST plus. I'm not sure though, but that, that's where I think I see it. That's, that's how you see your SD sleep then? Yeah. Okay. Um, you also have double masculine sleep. So what's that double masculine sleep like for you? I honestly have no idea, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's okay. Your sleep lasts, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's, uh, that would be interesting to figure out because uh, double, masculine, double masculine SD. Okay, I, I have a theory. So maybe you can entertain me for a bit and, and see uh, what you think of this. I shall try. So... Masculine SI individually and masculine. So if you're masculine SI and someone gets the facts wrong, you might be quick to correct them. Be like, 
hey, you know, that's not the that's not the right number. Like if someone says one plus one equals eleven, right? <laughs> if someone says one plus one equals eleven, you're like, one plus one is not eleven. <laughs> no, yeah, but look, look, it's eleven. But no, no, but it's not eleven, right? It's it's you know, it's obviously wrong. And then so you're gonna correct them. Like that's not you know, that that's not right. That logically it's wrong. You know, um, so maybe S S T sleep is even more intense than that because your T I is gonna correct someone that is saying something illogical. So if they're saying something that's illogically inconsistent, you're going to correct them really right away. But on top of that, you're also correcting them on the facts to back up that logical inconsistency. So it's like a double aggressive correction for someone, you know, when someone's getting something wrong. I honestly believe it's it's more of a character thingy. You know what I mean? It, you know, it's like you know, type I don't think really does play a role like that because I know some bomb ENTPs who are like very empathetic and they, they really understand the game of humans, you know, right. or oh, damn feelings are more important than thinking. Okay. So it's like, yo, if, if you, if for you thinking that makes you happy, go ahead. Think that who am I to stop you? Because every, because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to use my double masculine ST to make myself feel good. You're using your theories to make yourself feel good. We both really are doing the same thing. I'm trying to make myself feel good. You're trying to make yourself feel good. So, so what really is the difference though? There's no difference at all. So, so for me, it's like, yo, you, you want to believe that? Cool, you know, believe it. I, I would like give my opinion, but if, if this is something you think is real, go ahead, you know? Okay. I think that's very double decidery of you, by the way. <laughs> that's so double decider. So may, maybe you won't use that because you're a double decider because you, you know, you're going to offend someone or it, it's not worth it, you know, because you said the human factor is very important, right? Uh, so I guess if you were someone that's like an INTP maybe and you, you don't care about the feelings of the other person, then you're more likely to, you know, use that double masculine ST sleep then to correct someone when they're wrong or something. I don't know. What do you think about that? I think it all comes down to character, how they brought up their value system. End of the day, yeah. So it depends on the person then. It's, it's not like... Yeah. Not 100%. There is there is one scale that uh, Dave and Shan talks about that everyone just conveniently ignore. And no one really talks about this measurement. That is the growth versus fixed mindset. That's what Dave and Shan calls it. What I call is like levels of consciousness. The more conscious you are, the, the, the level that you're in in terms of consciousness will uh, vary in terms of your character. So maybe maybe someone is in the lower level of consciousness might do that, but we are living in a world today where there's from low to like high, everyone in between, you know. Right. So I think it is if you really wanted to like pin down people like that, oh masculine said boom, correcting people, something like that, you also have to like put in the level of consciousness, which is very hard to track by the way. So so it's like okay, you could use parallel dynamics, which is a framework to track consciousness, but. But then why, why are we going so much uh, SI detail, you know? What, what, why does it really matter? As long as the NI pattern, like, works, so why, like, look in the weeds, you know what I mean? Okay. I think, I think the problem here is um, uh, I'm, I'm disrespecting your TI, you know? Like, because I have TE, right? So I don't go deep into the, into the logic. Like, for me, it's like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, this is good enough for everyone, you know? Yeah. But you're like, nope, no, we, yeah. have, we have to be precise, you know? And I'm like, ah, you know, like... <laughs> The, the the good thing is, yo, this is your process, you know what I mean? So yeah. for me as a TI user, yeah. I study systems, I study all this pilot dynamics so I can see the patterns panning out. Right. But for a TI user to like really realize all this stuff, they have to do a lot of TE and they'll eventually figure out this. Oh my God, it actually just depends on the levels of consciousness. And this is a kind of like a hero's journey that you ha you might have to go through. It's like, oh my God, boom, SI gone. Then, then over time you realize, oh my God, it really depends on the character. Because that's how I see TI user, TE users landing in TI. Like how Dave and Chan landed up on OPS system. They just threw stuff at wall. Whichever yeah. worked, stayed. Whichever didn't work, didn't stay. Right. So I understand that it's just like one TE theory which is not personal to you. Which, which I'm fine with, you know. Just throw stuff at me. Let's see what sticks over a period of time. And whatever sticks, that works. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, exactly. You got it. That's, that's, the, that's what the TE people do. They just throw it in the wall and hope something comes out of, out of it. Yeah, um, sure. So I appreciate your process, yeah. Yeah, but, but we're a little bit different in the sense too, because I have FI, right? So 
uh, mm -hmm. for you, you, you were prior prioritizing the harmony in a group with the FE, right? Like, let's just get along. Like, you know, there's no reason to have conflict about this, you know? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll respect your point of view, respect my point of view. But then I have FI, right? I'm like, yeah, but if I don't like you and I think you're full of shit, like, I'm not going to respect you. You know, it's, it's a little bit different, right? So there's, yeah. there's not a huge emphasis on harmony with the FI uh, just because because yeah. I feel like, yeah, but like, if you're just trying to say, let's just keep the peace, you know, like, I'm like, that's too shallow for me. I'm like, I'm not going to, I can't accept that, you know? I mean, obviously, there's a time and place for everything, but you know, that's that's kind of like my point of view. Um, Definitely. Yeah. As a DI user, I do get that because because my identity is built on logic. If yeah, right. if if you are if you're coming out of some logical inconsistency, like constantly, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Are you stupid? But yeah. so I I do get that struggle of FI, but as a leader, I mean, if you're like leading some group or something like that, you better be able to do that, you know better be able to deal with FI users, TI users, FE users, DE users. And it's like, yo, how can I like reach a consensus? So I have feminine FE too. So like, like what we're doing right now, it's like, okay, you know what, this is your process. You should go ahead with it. Who am I to stop you? I'm letting you call the shots. You know what I mean? I'm not really like imposing my TIST on you. So right. it's like, yo, this is you, you know, be you. Uh, talk, talk about your feminine FE. What's your feminine FE like? How do you experience that? Uh, I'm very movable with the tribe. As in, if, if the tribe says, yay, then I go, yay, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, if you heard my laugh, it's very feminine, effy. Yeah. It's, it's like that Shan giggles. It's not like that Dave. <laughs> yeah. You what, laugh like that. What is yours? <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, I I'm see. sorry? Let's hear your, fem your, your, your effy laugh then. Yo, I, yo, I wish I could call laugh on command, but I can't. But so whenever, just notice whenever I'm laughing, it is probably going to be like very feminine. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so it, it is very movable with the tribe, I would say, compared to like thing. So that's something I have to like control because I cannot like move myself for the tribe a lot in terms of emotions. So I have to use that TI and like back it up. Okay, you know what? This is where I draw the line. So that is, that is what I'm trying to find. Okay, where is the line? It was very hard to like see the line, if you know what I mean. I noticed something interesting between FE and FI users, more from a, a projection standpoint. So I noticed that people who have extrovert feeling, mm -hmm. they have a hard time, hard time producing an emotion on the spot. Like kind of like I just asked you, hey, can you show me your, your, uh, your, your, uh, your feminine FE laugh, you're like, I can't do it on the spot. Like I have to, like it, it comes out when it comes There's out. There's nothing funny about to laugh, laugh to, you know? So it's like. No, but, but I mean like, but can you do it on the spot though? And that, that, that's the, that's the problem. Like it's, 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 I'm not, it's not a problem. I need like, something funny. Yeah. To yeah. Laugh. <laughs> yeah. So you need to, you need to mirror it from the outside while like someone with like, uh, uh, with FI, they can just make it up on the spot. Right. You know, like I can just laugh on the spot. Like I can just, I, I can, I can, <laughs> I can amuse myself and I can like laugh. <laughs> you know? Could you like show me? So let me before laughing. Could you tell me what uh, is it? Feminine or masculine? Fi. I have masculine. Fi. But but like so, I so try laughing. <laughs> you know. You know. You see, that's very masculine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like, but but like I at least I can make it up. I can like, I can I can conjure up those emotions on the spot. You know, because it's fi. I think like I can just go in myself and say, how can I make myself mad and then I can like have that anger right you know interesting yeah it's like on the spot I can I can, I can conjure it up on the spot but like I, I noticed that people with FE have an INFJ sister and I was trying to make her like make an emotion and she couldn't do it right and then when when me and my sister I think we have uh, both FI um we could make she, she thought we were psychopaths because we were making like emotion just on the spot like changing emotion really quickly you know and we're like well no we're not psychopaths it's just like an FI thing you know FI people can it was by accident, like, like I, I noticed this. It's like, so FI people can like self-amuse themselves or anger themselves and it, com it comes out. While the FE people, they have to like mirror it from the tribe, you know? So if the, if the tribe people are like laughing their ass off, then the FE person is laughing their ass off too. And I, I was experimenting with this actually. Like I went to an INFJ once and I started changing my facial expression on purpose to see if he would mirror, mirror me. He <laughs> did. And I was like, oh, this is like messed up. I was like, <laughs> and he like goes like this to me too, right? You know, you know, and I was like, 
I was like, yo, I was like, some crazy shit right there. What's that? No, nothing. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Funny, funny, very funny. No, it is funny. I was like, well, what the fuck? Like, what is, what is this? Like, is it for real? Like, you can just, like, I can just, if I, like, if I wanted to see if someone has the F me, I just like make up the face, like mm-hmm. that. Like you can always manipulate the FE people, you know. Like we just now, I, I'm I'm curious though. So, let's say that the tribe is laughing. Do you feel like it's now funny? Like, do you actually feel like it's funny now? You know, I, I if I feel it's funny, I laugh. You know what I mean? But for me, I don't think I would laugh just because the tribe is laughing. Maybe I would like go along with it for some time, but then I would be like, you know what, I'm out. So, so no, when is it that you're actually feeling the, 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 the laugh versus when you're going along with it? Like, when, where is the line for, for that? You know, I'm curious. Yo, I honestly don't know, man. All right. Uh, no. I think it's very hard to gauge such line because I do it somewhat naturally. Yeah. So, so it's very hard to, like, uh, see something that you're doing in a serious way. So. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it, it's, 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 uh, I'm, it's, very, it's very fascinating to me. But uh, you do have a savior play, right? So, uh, yeah. That, that would make that FE kind of, in a, that FE in the, in the play animal in a savior state. Um, uh-huh. Do you find yourself going on a more manic stage with the play and blast together? Because they said the play and blast people are like crackheads, right? Like they go in a crackhead mode. So do you feel like you go in a crackhead, like a manic crackhead mode? Uh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any yeah. stories where like the, it just came out like like let's say you were in a consumed state you're more calm and then suddenly like you went on that ma- manic play blast mode. how do you define manic like i'm very manic i'm play blast manic right like okay like if, if you get me started talking i'm not gonna stop i'm just gonna go in a massive like on a massive spiel you know and it's play and blast together so it's not just like me lecturing you i'm also being playful with you kind of like earlier when i was talking about the fake emotion that was me on like a manic stage state right mm-hmm. you know like it's kind of like tony robbins you know you've seen him like he's pretty much manic all the time like when you see him on stage and he's yeah talking. yeah i don't think i have i don't think i have that kind of problem a lot i kind of exchange information pretty evenly as an info dom you know just okay here's what i think what do you think so there's somewhat an even exchange but when i start talking about my nt stuff like theory of everything what life is stuff like that yeah. Then, and especially when I'm building my logical framework, like step, okay, here's like ground zero, like step one, step two, step, I'm building it up. I don't want someone to like interrupt and stop me. You know what I mean? I'm going to like blast it out completely. It's like a recipe started. I'm not going to like let the recipe, stop the recipe halfway through, you know, I'm going to like finish the recipe. Then I would like to hear what you want to say. Something like that. Yeah. Well, only for uh, the NT stuff though. For the NT? Meaning all others. Only for the NT stuff. Yeah. Only for the NT yeah. stuff. Yep. So basically, you prefer to consume first because the moment that your logic thing builds up, it's going to all come out in a big avalanche and you don't want anyone to interrupt it. So it's like... Yeah. Yeah, it's all processed. It's all TI. It's all down there. It, it, it is me like, trying to like prove a mathematical proof, you know? Yeah. This is equal to that. Watch me prove it. I don't want your opinion. Like, this is self-explanatory. You know what I mean? So to the step one, step two, step three, step four, boom. The left side is equal to the right side. Gotcha. Um, you're masculine feminine. So do you find that your learning style is auditory? Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Uh, is, is it more videos or just audio no. books or anything that sounds like? Audio books. Like, like I learn a lot through audio books. So I can finish one book a day. That, that's because it's not only I have consumed high, but I also like was, I also used to consume very, very deep NT stuff, which like hurts your brain, stuff like that. So when, once you get there, normal books aren't that deep. They are just very somewhat shallower compared to the other deep NT stuff I do. So I can like rip through them in, no, in like 2.2x speed. Put it in 2.2x and like hear it. So an audio book is around 10 hours. You put it at 2.2x is 5 hours. So it's like you can easily finish it in a day. Damn, that's pretty good. Uh, that's awesome, man. That's a superpower. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm also auditory because uh, a, few, a few days ago I was watching a video on 2x speed and then my girlfriend asked me, like, do you, do you even know what they're saying? And then I explained to her yeah. exactly what the person was saying. She's like, what the hell? You know, so I, I, I get that with like, the auditory people. They picked up like quick with, uh, with the audio, you yeah. know. Um, you, 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 know watch, you, watch, you watch video at 2x speed, boom, auditory. Yeah. 
auditory. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's right. You got it. Um, you're also kinesthetic. So do you find yourself very good with like learning with the, you know, using your hands or body movements uh, or exercise? Like, can you talk about that? Your experience with the uh, kinesthetic. Uh, <laughs> I think again it comes down to like a character thingy, and what your purpose is going to be over life. So. Uh, Exercise, I don't think I'm really like, good at exercises, but I recently started exercising. But I, I don't think I would attribute my standard of exercise to kinesthetic because I think anyone could do the kind of exercise I do. I just do like warm ups, that's it. It's not very like kinesthetic dom. So I, I guess what you're implying is are you naturally good at exercising because you're kinesthetic? I don't think a human is that. Is, is that not what you're implying? No? That wasn't my question, uh, 100%. Okay. But this is, it's okay. It's okay to go with this path. But you, you were saying that, yeah, you, let's go with that then. Do you think you're naturally good at, do you think you pick it up quickly? Do you think you pick it up quickly? Exercise. Do you think you pick it up quickly? Like, let's say you learn how to lift weights. Would you say you can pick it up pretty quickly because you're kinesthetic? Uh, <laughs> I, I honestly don't know the spectrum of uh, quickly. I don't know where I fall in the spectrum of quickly because you're, you're lifting weights, you know. So... So like can't, so I don't know. Like, so what do you mean quickly? So what's the difference between a person who like lifts weights quickly compared to like? Do you have good body awareness? Like, can you can, can you um can you control your body well? Like, okay, I'll give you an example. I work in a fitness industry, right? Uh huh. Okay. Let's say I'm showing someone how to do a squat. Mm -hmm. Some people I show them a squat, boom! The first time I show them, they got it right away. They got it right away. The first time I showed it to them, they just got it right away. Some people I show them a squat and I'm thinking that that there's no fucking way I sh that's how I show you how to do a squat. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like, wh are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what the fuck is that shit? You know? God damn. Like, okay. j j Jesus fucking Christ! Like, like I just want to, like I'm a, I work in a yeah. fitness industry, right? And I'm like I just want like like hang myself with a noose, you know? I'm like. Yeah, this. I don't. I don't think. I don't think I'll give you a panic attack if you are my personal trainer. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. So you're you're in the in the better range. Like you would probably yeah. like more or less like maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I would. I, I would try my best not to give you a panic attack. Yeah. I have FE two, so I can double with double decide my way through. Yeah. Yeah. Or like sometimes I'm showing someone to do a plank, right? And then like you know the plank, your body's supposed to be perfectly straight. Yeah. Your but back needs to be straight with your butt. Yeah. 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 And then they're like. Instead of a straight line, what I see is an upside down V. And I'm like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? How does this look like a plank? Why is your ass sticking up in the air? Are you like, <laughs> you know, that's, like, that's a beautiful I have, rant, yeah. Well, I have, uh, I have double masculine sleep, uh, double masculine sleep, and I have I'm double masculine inside, right? And I have masculine FI. So inside, I'm raging to the max, right? You know, and I'm like, I'm just pissed off, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm like, fuck this person. I don't want to train this person anymore. You know, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's so annoying, you know? And so that's why, and, and I, I usually, when I see people like that, they usually have, you know, demon feminine SE, you know, you know, that, that's usually what it is. Like from what I've okay. seen. Interesting. Yeah. You I, don't, I don't think I'll give you panic attacks. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. Then I would say, I, I, I understand thing is I've kind of understood the logic of how muscles work and stuff like that. Yeah. So I kind of understand what's happening inside yeah. in the muscles. So it's easier for me to have body awareness. Let's put it that way. Yeah, there because you go. I know, okay, your your body, your your back needs to be straight. Uh, your whenever you're doing, let's say, bicep curls, you need to like feel your biceps going up and down. You cannot feel your shoulders going. You know, the shoulder bit behind. You can't right. activate these muscles. You need to like activate the bicep muscles. So if you're doing like shoulder exercise, don't activate your. So if you're doing like a back back exercise, don't activate your shoulders and triceps. Activate your back muscles. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got so it. So I, I, yeah, yeah. So I understand. I understand that game. So for me, it's like easier to okay. You know what? I'm not activating this muscle. So let me like change. Yeah. Maybe that's also the ST sleep. Like you, you, you know the step yeah. by step. Like, like okay, this yeah. is how you do. This is how you properly. So you have your TI and NE, right? You consume how to properly lift a weight. So you got the con. Yeah. You got the concept. Yeah. Right? And then now you're the step-by-step -step inside. You're like, okay, step one, do yeah. this, step two, do this. And then, yeah, you're okay. So I won't have a panic attack if I see you. Lifting. Yeah, you won't have a panic attack. Yeah, don't worry. I'm like, so I'll, instead I'll use if, if you were If you were training me in the gym, 
yeah you you would probably have a wonderful time you would be ranting i'd be working out you know it's going to be fun yeah no i'll 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 go up to the other idiot the the, the, the other idiot client and be like do you see what hey look at what prem is doing that's how you fucking do it okay the way you're doing right now you're you're stupid you know like yo just, yo don't do that don't do that my family na feels like yo stop <laughs> i don't like that like what why are you comparing us you know but yeah i mean one on one session yeah definitely yeah I'll, okay i'll just do it behind her back then <laughs> <laughs> sure okay okay cool man um do you have trouble with visuals because you don't have the the visual mod- uh sexual modality i i don't really know i paint so are you good at painting so, i don't know i'm not bad at it let's put it that way but i'm not good it's like yeah it's, i i learned color theory and all so i have that nt down to like how colors work so it's like a cold color warm color you put this that so i understand that came to in a very nt way right so so what what i realized is when i paint and when i listen to a music and i start painting i kind of like go zone out you know it's like that flow state it's in 100% and the kind of art i produce in the flow state yo i don't even know when i look at that art it doesn't feel like i pro- i made it you know and, and i am kind of creeped out it's like yo man there's never in a million years where i can reproduce this yeah oh, so i'm like that's so interesting holy shit yeah but do you, so do you it's like that, do you need that music to give you that flow state though do you need to have the music to give you the flow state kind of i, I haven't experimented much but whenever i heard music i kind of got into flow state but is but the thing with me is i i never like got into painting because oh my god i love to paint something like that right so the the way that story goes is there was a girl uh, there is my friend she want she had her birthday coming up and i didn't want to like give her some cliche stuff you know like kitchen you know, or whatever like what they give you yeah. like some weird gift so i thought you know she always said uh, she missed the sight of full moon you know what i mean so there was this full super moon and that's the biggest she ever saw Yeah. and she like missed it and she bought a camera and ever since then she's been searching for that moon but she didn't get it she couldn't find the moon so i was like you know what let me just paint a big moon with like small like rocks whatever and i kind of understand the color theory right so let's see how hard can it be like to put a circle down here's like the one person that's how that's how i got into art before i got into youtube that's how i got into art circle with some lighter gray stuff in between you know what i mean so i just bought colors i started painting it and i started listening to music right and yo it just put me in flow state and i was like damn this is amazing then and then i kind of continued and now i kind of stopped because other things caught up yeah now now i'm trying to like schedule my days so that i can make time for it what did you like the painting yeah yo the painting came out amazing yeah I mean did you give it to her? Yeah. Oh that that's you know what that's a really thoughtful gift man that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah yeah that's a really thoughtful gift. I think I, I think uh I think a lot of girls will fall in love with you if you keep giving them those kind of gifts. Uh it, it was never my intention to like like make a call for me or something like that. I know I know, I know but that, just, I'm just saying like yeah, it, is that you know is just that she's SF. Yeah. So I thought okay you know what let me just give her SF painting. You know what I mean? Something she can like value in sensory, something like that. I thought that would be more uh, meaningful. So it's like, okay, if you're giving a gift, why like uh, tone it down? You know, why not go all all out? Yeah. Plus, it's for me. It's like I'm building in the reps of giving good gifts. So I kind of understand what works, what doesn't. So yeah. the more good gifts I give, the better I get at giving gifts. So that is a useful skill for me, which is I'm trying to cultivate. Gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a non-op question. I'm just curious about something. how do, sure how does dating work in in india do, do you like i know there's a lot of arranged marriage there but like uh-huh. can, can you date normally too <laughs> yeah dude I, let me like put it this way you can kind of date normally but sex is taboo so so it's like yo the, the thing is dating here the risk to reward is not really worth it especially for like a smart guy like me i wouldn't say a smart guy like me but especially if you're like a guy like me who has stuff to do in her life yo listen to this if one girl said look yo this guy can trick he fuck me boom people in the streets are going to like hit your ass you know what i mean it's like they're going to like murder you almost 
they they send it like it is taken like very seriously if we talk to and, a... and it's like most of the guys most of the guys here are like you know very very desperate needy yeah and sometimes these girls fall for these kind of guys they have like a bad time obviously so yeah. no one is like that like compared to america no one is that uh, mature in terms of relationship yeah. it's always like oh this is something you do behind your parents back something like that so you can do it but you have to do it behind people's back like you have to do it in secret yeah so so yeah it's just not worth it yeah so for me i always thought you know what frame i'm going to become famous i can't have stuff like you know me too moments coming against me you know what i mean so okay. that stuff can very easily happen in india yeah is that like an ep paranoia <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know. So for me, it's like I would rather not have that risk, you know. Yeah. Because see, I I know the first relationship was gonna fail. I know it's even going to fail because I am not where I am supposed to be. Okay. Right. I haven't built myself. Angels don't live in hell. So what am I going to do with some other girl coming into my life? Then me spending half of my time with her talking. So the thing is, the kind of girls I like are pretty SF. and even wrote a facebook post in after dark about this this yeah. kind of personal so the kind of girls i like are usually like sleep high fi doms sf something like that right yeah. some something in that category yeah. so i love so it's it's very attractive for me when i won't say very attractive it kind of catches my eye you might say when someone talks about their fi and stuff like that in a very like doing cute stuff and stuff like that but the thing is it lasts only 10 minutes for me you know Ten minutes later, I'm thinking to myself, "Yo, why am I even listening to this? It's not worth it, you know. There's nothing to consume here. I would rather read a book about some theory." But then I'm attracted to those kind of girls, and if I talk to them, all I'm going to hear 24/7 is like morals. This is how I felt. This is how it happened to me. Stuff like that. Yo, I don't have time for all that, you know. Plus, it's not like many people are good at something else. I want an equal exchange. Yo, if I'm giving you my time, I better get something in back. something in return back this might be like a di thing so it's like yo you're not good at anything you're taking some of my time i have to listen to all this fi stuff yo you know what never mind and it's until they are good at let's say if they are good at a skill that i want to learn then probably i could have exchange of information where okay you teach me this then i would like you know keep up with that have some sort of equal exchange you know what i mean but just a very weird perspective dude you know me i i don't really know this stuff Like, don't take advice from me. For my plan is, I just work on myself, build myself. Along the journey, I know I'm going to meet someone. Or if I meet, great. If I don't meet, boom, whatever. Yeah. There is something. Yo, know, this. I had like a very this past. This is something. Yo, know, I would say. You know, since uh, in my twelfth class, uh, when I was in twelfth high school, I used to watch a lot of animes, right? Yeah. And uh, whenever I used to watch a lot of animes, I used to think. I always wanted that kind of relationship because anime chicks are very SF. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, if I only had a relationship like this. Yeah. And it's, I was always searching for something, and I used to live my life through them. Every day I used to watch an anime just because I didn't like the place I was living in, this reality that I was living in. Right. That's the kind of guy I was. I was that one of the needy, desperate guys looking for that girl, you know. And uh, I was I was searching for something, and then. Uh, and then when i went to the university my first year first class i enter the classroom i see the most beautiful girl in my life i'm like yo man this girl is so beautiful stuff like that you know how guys work right they fall in like first sight yeah so so i thought okay this is what i finally found it this is what i this is what i was searching for you know a relationship with this girl you know what i mean but then i proposed i got rejected and then i'm sitting down in my canteen right and building ground floor canteen with my friend and this guy is like some double masculine estp some some st type and i and i just i'm i'm in tears right i'm brink of tears and i'm asking him yo man why do you think she doesn't like me stuff like that and i wasn't that assertive or confident back then like the person you're talking now the completely different guy back then okay and he just took out his phone he took a picture of me showed it to me is like yo man look why why would the most prettiest girl in the class fall for a guy like you oh and yo know, that hit me so hard and i kind of broke and i was like because because it, it is kind of rude yeah but there was a truth in it it is it is yeah it is a truth yeah you no know? so i was like so 
that's how i got into self help that's how i was like oh my god i just i just need to improve myself so i can finally redeem myself you know that was the mindset and then i was like searching 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 reading books consuming the hell out of self help yeah that's how i learned fitness that's why i have good understanding of fitness color theory all that stuff fitness is to look good color theory is to buy good clothes all this sf makeup uh, how to do your hair what it does your face shape your hair style cut all this stuff just me trying to like figure out myself so i can finally date someone and live that anime life that i always dreamed of yeah and i was always searching for something you know i, I was four years past i was searching for something and i finally found it all i had to do was look in the mirror and that's where it really like changed you know what all the stuff that i know why wasn't i thought all this you know all this growth that is possible i was like thought about math whatever but i never i was never thought how to love myself i never thought how to deal with emotion depression stuff like i always had to like here you can't afford therapist and all so you're almost on, on your own and your friends they don't know much right they're like with you they, they don't know how to deal with the emotions and stuff like that everyone's trying to medicate themselves and avoid themselves using youtube and facebook stuff like that so you're almost on your own that's why i was like so desperate every book i read was a desperate attempt of you know okay in this book i'm going to find something that's going to change my life that's how i usually like tackle every book so now my goal is like you know you know what i have to like upgrade this education system that's why i'm into ops for me it's like i see in ops a way to upgrade the education system in a self growth way so that's what i'm going after so for me this vision is more important than any of the materialistic pleasures that that is what i'm going after right now so so for me like uh, uh, i do yo i i i actually want to like date someone who's like beautiful attractive all that stuff have like a good time but i know it's a sacrifice and i don't want to like sacrifice my dream for some materialistic pleasure because i see in myself that i will get bored with it pretty fast i know i will get bored with it like within a month or two so it's like why even bother All right, I love your story, man. That's really good. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, no problem. I don't think you're gonna get bored, to be honest. It's it's not it's okay if you if you if you've never had a girlfriend, I think it's 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 hard to it kind of explain it. Yeah. But you know you know you're talking about the one percent. You know like you know if you blast for three months, you're gonna get one percent better. You know. Yeah. If you lifted weights for three months nonstop, you're gonna get one percent better. Yeah. But You know, when I was, uh, if you want to get good at something, you need to practice that one specific thing. So if you want to be good yeah. with weights, then you have to lift weights. If you want to be good at painting, you know, you have to paint. You know, it's like the it's yeah. like the joke, right? You're not going to be a great martial <laughs> artist if you watch a kung fu movie, right? Like you can watch yeah. all the kung fu, kung fu movie, you're not going to be Bruce Lee, right? Uh, mm. So basically, what I'm trying to get at here is like, yes, you can work on the SF stuff, you can look good and blah blah blah, and yes, that's going to help, you know, attract. a girl in the future but then once you're with that person for like maybe a day they'll soon find out you're still the same needy guy because you don't have any practice with relationships like zilch zero if you don't have practice with that specific thing which is relationship with the opposite sex then you're going to be a needy person because you don't know you don't know shit like you don't have that you don't have the repetition in you know you know what I'm trying to say i disagree i i disagree but i i do understand where you're coming from But okay. Okay. Well, you're young, so you'll you'll find out. You'll find out soon. Sure. All right. Okay. All right. But I I do, I do like your story. Thank you for sharing that, though. That that's uh I think that's very uh, I think it's a lot of things that a lot of guys can relate to. So I think it's a really good story. <laughs> yeah. I've been I've been through your story before. Like I can see myself being that person. Like being you, actually. Yeah. That exact thing. The exact thing that you said actually happened to me before. So I can 100% relate uh, to your story. Uh, All right, Prem. I'm going to wrap up the interview, and um, I'm going to ask you two last questions, and we'll wrap this up. Okay. So the first question I have for you is, um, what do you think you can do to better improve in your sleep, last? Um, I would say um, if someone wants to improve their sleep, last, especially like an ENTP like me, journaling is going to be it, and um, it's like. the thing what i realized is you have to journal but every time you overcome an obstacle you, you should not go to the next obstacle but kind of process how you overcame that obstacle 
know what I mean. That's what sleep processing is. So, so let's say you write about this weird stuff, breakup stuff, whatever. And once you overcame that neediness, once you overcame all that desire, and once there's something you love, something else, don't go and start following that. Go and sleep process how you overcame it. And once you understand the dynamic, once it hits you again, you understand yourself better enough to deal with that. You know what I mean? So that's how I would improve my sleep. Probably journaling. That's why I have my YouTube channel, DNTB or Nurture, links in the description. Um, my, for me, the U YouTube channel is like, okay, kind of like journaling, but it's like most of more of blast. So for me, it's like, okay, that is my style of journaling, you might say. And everyone has different style of journaling. The only thing that I would uh, give out is all the information that you put, wherever, whatever you journal, right? Audio notes, text, whatever. Because of the demon SI, you need to put it in a place that you trust. So you cannot, if you don't trust notebooks like me, don't try to like maintain a physical diary. You know, try to maintain like an electronic diary. I use Evernote because I trust Evernote saying that, okay, no matter where I am, I can just put in my email ID and get it, get it done. Some people trust books. Go for it. So I'm not, so whichever SI works for you, do that. But the concept behind journaling is you have to put it in a place that you trust. Got it. And then do you have any questions for me about functions that you don't have, like FI or TE? Uh, so what is, uh, what's your last animal sleep, right? I'm sleep last like you are. Yeah. So do you relate? So how do you sleep, uh, sleep last, last process? Stuff? Um, the way I do it is well, when I discovered how to use it properly, it was, When I would be on, when I would be driving my car, I don't listen to music. I uh, I drive to work and I kind of watch a movie of what happened in my life in the last few days, or the last few weeks, or even throughout my whole life. And I'll get like movies of like what happened, and then kind of like experience what I felt during those moments. And then I'll ask myself like, why did I feel that way? during this moment, you know, what caused me to feel this way? So I'm trying to kind of like understand why a certain emotion happened, you know, like let's mm -hmm. say someone offended me or I felt scared during a situation, then I would kind of try to understand my feelings in that moment, you know? And then once I understand the feelings, I'm like, okay, now I know what to do in the future. If this kind of situation happens again, I'll give you a concrete example. Um, long time ago, I was working in this one fitness facility and this race, this, 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 this man who looks like a racist white guy, um, he, he looks, yeah. at me, looks like me from a distance, right? And he's like, hey, come here, come here. <laughs> and, you know, like if someone does this to you, it's really offensive, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I can feel it, yeah. I can feel it from here, yeah. Yeah, and I was so offended, but I was paralyzed. I didn't know how to react in that situation. And I also mm -hmm. have feminine TE, right? So like feminine with the tribe. So like I just kind of let him get away with it, right? But I, I processed it in my head like, like several times. I'm like, okay, that situation made me really angry. I felt that he was being rude and doing this is very disrespectful. If he wanted help from me, he could simply just go up to me. He's like, hey, can I get help with something? But nope, he had to go the rude way of doing it, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, how would I react if this situation happened again so that I'm not going to feel talks, like feel like, because that negative emotion stays inside. You know, so mm -hmm. I don't want it to stay inside because it's toxic. So I want it to come out. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what will I do next time? I said, okay, if this ever happens again, you need to confront that person directly and you don't need, and you have to not give a shit if you get fired from work. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I can accept that. So SI, step one, confront the person. Step two, don't get, don't be, 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 be ready that you're going to get fired. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Byron Katie's work? And I don't like Byron Katie. I, I know what she does, but I don't, I, don't like, I don't like her methods. I don't think it's uh, relatable for FI users. I think maybe for FE people it's good. But Yeah, she has the same stack RP, so maybe that's why I relate, yeah. Yeah, but... Um, so this happened to me again, actually, last year. <laughs> so there's another, like, you know, guy that was in the gym also, and he did this to me too. He's like, hey, come here, come here come here, you know? And I was like triggered, right? Like this is racist, you know? And this is also like rude, you know? 
So I went up to him and he's about to tell me the problem, right? In the gym. And I said, Hey, why are you doing this? And he's like, he's like, he, 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 he like, he got like triggered too. Right. And then I said to him, why are you doing this? This is rude. You don't do this to people. If you want to ask questions, you ask nicely. He's like, I don't have a problem with your people. I'm like, whoa, 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 bye people. <laughs> the thing is, see, this is where Effie comes out. It's like, yo, he, he, he might not, this is my, this might be something that uh, he's do, he might be doing all his life. So for him, this is natural. But for you, you took it as in a rude way. So when you come in with that rude energy, it kind of like reflects back. I don't think he is, so, he, I don't think he is FE, man. I, thought he, I think he was an ESTJ. But, um, okay. So but, I, I was just trying to tell that, you know, maybe, maybe it's like, you know, maybe it's like, let's say someone punches you. What would you do? You won't show the other cheek. Oh, right? let me finish the, punch him back. Let me finish the story first, man. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Before you blast, hold on. Let me finish the okay. story first. So okay. he, he freaked out, right? Like when he, when I, when I, when he, when I, <laughs> when I right? That's funny as fuck. No, no, I just said to him, I'm like, hey, you know, you don't, you don't do this. This is rude. If you need, if you need to ask, a, a, if you have a problem, you're going to like, just ask nicely. You don't do this. This is rude. And he said to me, he's like, yeah. you know, I don't have a problem with your people. I'm like, wait a minute. Why, why did this become a people problem? This, like, I brought this up because this is more like a mannerism problem. Like, this is a rude manner. You don't do this. This is rude, right? You know, if you have a problem, you know, ask nicely. So I, I was kind of surprised. Like, so I, I stopped being angry at that point. Like, I was more surprised. I'm like, what? Um, yeah. And then, and so I'm like, okay, tell me what the problem is. So he told me what the problem is, right? I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll report it, like whatever. So I just left, right? I was more confused now at this point. And then I come back to the gym and then I see him talking to other Asian people in the gym, right? He's a white guy, right? Talking to other Chinese people. And he's like, I don't, and he's like, I don't have a problem with your people. He's talking to this one Chinese kid, right? I'm like, are you kidding me? This, the problem was never a race. Like, are you, are you stupid? Like, and then this Chinese guy was like looking at him confused, right? You know? <laughs> You know, uh, you so it's like, oh, see, yeah. Jay, what Notice the seed, though. Yeah. What's Notice that? the seed, though. The seed was some guy came up rude to me. That, that, that's what even I'm realizing. It's like whatever. This is like law of attraction stuff. Whatever energy you put out, that's what you get back. Everything is like a mirror reflecting back. Yeah. So it's like the the more composed, the more uh, the more positive framework you have. Oh my God, maybe this is how he was brought up. How poor of him. So let me like, you know, gently tell him, oh my God, I know this, this might be something you've been doing your entire life, but hey, you know, I don't really appreciate when people call me like this. Would you please not call me like this and forth? Then probably you'd be like, oh fuck, I understand. But it's no. like, oh, what, what the fuck? Yo, you did this to me? Who, who do you think you are? It's like, yo, 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 what the, you know what I mean? It's like that energy stuff, that, that's something even I'm trying to learn and process. So it might be a demon as I think, who knows? Well, dude, we're different. I don't have FE, I have FI. So I don't really care. No, I said demon SI thing. Yeah. But I say that I also don't care about other people's feelings. Like, like, like. Interesting. Like if, if I'm mad, I need to get it out. I don't care if you get mad. Mine's, mine's out. That's your problem now. You know? You have my, you have my anger yeah. now. Like, see, after I told it to him, I actually came, I, I come down right away. And I'm like, oh, I feel fine now. And he's, yeah. he's, he's raging now. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you're raging. That's not my problem. You know, I got it out. That's that's not. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, and now he's going crazy. You know, talking to other Asian people, and I'm like, okay, you know what? Now he's he's actually just batshit crazy now, because yeah, yeah. he completely took it the wrong way now. Because it's like it's not a race yeah. thing; it's a matter matter thing. But anyways, so anyways, so like I'm just trying to illustrate how I use my sleep process, like how how, how I actually did it, right? You know, this happened to me. Very in the interesting past. way to sleep process. What's that? Yeah. So what was the very interesting way to sleep process. So what was the conclusion though? So sleep processes, what's the conclusion? Well, I just came up with a conclusion yesterday, actually. It's kind of funny because um, I'm having conflict nice. with, other, with other people um, recently. And I think it all boils down to boundaries. I'm not setting boundaries um, properly because I'm mm. lead play, right? So one of the traps that I'm experiencing with lead play is like, I'm overreaching to interact with a tribe because mm. I like the tribe. I like interacting with the tribe. I like that back and forth interaction, you know? Mm. And it's almost like I'm needy for the tribe. Um, mm. But I feel like it's a trap because the more I do it, the more I disrespect mm. myself and my boundaries. So mm. what, what, what I learned um, from like sleep processing now is like, okay, when I'm interacting with play, I need to know when to 
stop. Like, okay, stop, pull back. It's, there, I need to stop playing now. I need to go back to my, to my old world now, to Kendrick's world, you know? Um, because I was talking to a friend yesterday and this, this friend, I know he's kind of toxic too. Like he, he's kind of like the way he thinks is very like old fashioned and he doesn't like new ideas. He's, he's like very, I think, I don't know if he's NI or SI, but like, I think he's NI. He's always about a bad like, human. That's it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a bad human because like for him, if it, if it's not in his known information, he doesn't want to listen to you. Number one. And number two, if you're doing better than him, he'll tell you in an indirect way to kind of to purposely screw you up so that you're not, yeah. in the, you're not in the same level because he'll only help you to the point where he's still higher than you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I get that. so for me, what I realized was that every time I talk to him, I feel like I feel slimed, like it's like toxic almost. And mm. so I said to him, uh, I, so I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, it's my fault. I'm the one that decided to interact with him. Mm. I'm the one who decided to use play to interact with this tribe member. Mm. Had I not interacted with him, I would have not gotten t- poisoned, you know, mm. that toxic emotion, that, that the toxic behavior that he has. So, you know, it's like taking self-responsibility for my emotions and, for me to protect my emotion, if I interact with him, it has to be just five minutes and then pull back because otherwise I'm going to get poisoned, right? So I need to have a time limit for interaction with certain people. Like for example, if you're the kind of person that's um, growth mindset and you have a good energy and you know, um, you're a good person, I know you're, you're, you're hustling hard, you have like dreams in life that you want to achieve and I, I can see that you're, you're not all talk, you're not full of shit, you're actually doing the stuff that you're saying you're going to do that, hey, I need to go, then I can spend more time with you. It's okay, because you're, you're a positive influence. You're a positive, you bring good yep. energy to the, to the table, right? Um, yep. If you're someone that's toxic, I need to pull back right away. Even if you're a close friend, and I like, I like you a lot, you know? Like, you know, you have, friend, you have people that you, you, really, you really like them, but they're, you know, they're bad people, right? Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't change the fact that they're, they're still your friends, so they're kind of like a cheat meal, right? Like in fitness, you have like mm-hmm. the cheat meal, right? So, you know, maybe once or twice a year, I can hang out with you, and that's my cheat meal, right? But like, yeah, yeah. otherwise I'm not because it's, it's, it's toxic. So it's like, it's like yeah. a, a very bad lesson I have to learn now. Like, uh, uh, harsh- you know, this is something even I had and I had to build a TI framework for this too. So have a system on how to set boundaries, that the kind of stuff I do. I even made a video on it, cutting toxic people. Yeah. So my system is basically, the thing you have to realize is whenever you first meet someone, that's when you set boundaries. You are setting it either consciously or unconsciously, whatever. But whenever you first interact with them, that's the boundaries you set. So if you're becoming someone's under or something, that, that's how the relationship begins. So that's why it's very hard to like change relationship between your family members or close friends who you know for like long time because you change as a person. But in their eyes, you're still like that guy, that old guy. Right. It's very hard to change. So, so for people who, are, who you know personally, you need to cut relationship off for like, you know, one month, two months, three months and just don't talk to them. So what that does is it resets the boundary. So you know, that's what you think, because I've done that many times already. And it, it like, like I've cut off friends for four years and then I, you know, went back to the relationship again or family members where I didn't, I didn't see them for a year or two. And maybe the first two or two times, the first, first or second time you see them, maybe it's a little bit different, but they're, they're slowly, but surely they're going to try to put you back in the same box. Yeah, that, that, that's where you desist. This is where you create new sensory boundaries. Hey, this, what you're doing, I don't like it. You know what I mean? It's against my code. Oh, you, you asked me to pay, pick groceries? I'm sorry. I only help close friends. So what am I getting in return? You know what I mean? So th- th- this resets the mindset. And when they treat you that way, you can set boundaries now and feel comfortable. I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable doing this. So what I have, I have like three phrases. I don't feel comfortable doing this. This is something I learned from FI users. You know, it's like, damn, an FI user can just say, I don't like this and walk away. Because as a TI user, I want to like give reasons. You know, right. like, damn, I need like some reason to tell why I don't like this. But, right. but from FI users like you, I learned, holy, holy stuff, I don't need a reason. I just, I just need to say, I don't like this. Yeah, you don't. And yeah. I, I had a double masculine ESTJ friend. And I, let me tell you, this guy, I told him to his face, I don't want to like be friends with you anymore. He started screaming at my face. We are going to be friends. Tomorrow the sun is going to rise and everything is going to be all right. Yes, yes. You're like, oh, yes, yes. That's how I went, right? And yo, this is really like toxic friendship. But I didn't even, but every time I spoke to him, I, I know exactly what you feel. like put you down because he wants to like feel superior. 
I cut off relationship for like for one year. Yeah. And then one day he started being assertive. I'm like, yo, what? Why are you being assertive right now? You know? So then I then I I pull out my I pull out my masculine tea and I'm like, yo, I don't want to like do this friendship anymore. I wrote this message. I'm gonna leave. Yo, you call me. I don't want to like leave any loose ends. I just wrote a big message, and he didn't call me right. So I was thinking he'll call me and like scream or whatever. So I was kind of scared inside. A feminine nephi, but he didn't. He didn't call. The next day he kind of uh, sent a message. Yo, I know I really messed up. I'm really sorry. I understand what all happened. I understand you have to go your way. Go your way. Then I just ended in a double sided way. Yo, man, I have nothing but love and respect for you. You do your stuff. I do my stuff. I have changed a lot over the year. We don't relate anymore. I hope you have a good night, and I hope you achieve whatever you want to achieve. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ended there. So for me, it is very very important to set boundaries. Like like for like for example, in our interview, you said about the relationship, and I had to say I disagree. You know what I mean? In past, I wouldn't say because I have feminine energy. But I had to let go. I'm sorry. I disagree, but I understand where you're coming from. Right. So that way, I'm appreciating your point of view, but I'm also stating my boundaries. So even even throughout my stories, I've been setting boundaries, saying that you know, only oh, if you want to be in relationship with me, you need to like give me something in return. I don't want to just listen to all your FI talk. If you if you're good at something that I can learn from, so that is a boundary, right? There's an unconscious boundary that I just set. So any person that wants to be in relationship with me would kind of intuitively get, oh my god. This guy needs to be, needs me to be good at something. You know what I mean? So it's it's like you have to. You can set boundaries by stories, but the boundaries needs to be sensory because we are NF and NT. We don't we we create abstract boundaries. We have to catch in the sensory and saying, this is a sensory thing that you did to me. I don't like this. I'm sorry. I don't appreciate this. I'm sorry. Doing this is against my code. That's it. And then walk away. If they don't like you and if they like fall back, you have all the reason to just walk away. Because you set your boundaries, he's not following your boundaries. What else you want you to do? You know what I mean? So it gives socially, it gives you permission to just walk away. All right, thanks, man. Yep, that's my All blast. Right. Well, I'll uh, wrap up this interview now. So thanks, for <laughs> and uh, yep. Bye, everyone. Nice to talk to you, Kendrick. Nice to talk to you too, dude. And uh, we're.